So it's Dr. Ominde again. We continue with the embryology series. So we're talking about the clinical application of um, gametogenesis, and we had mentioned that for a lady that um, is of advanced age, um, before fertilization, it means that the oocytes that are within the ovum have been arrested in the first meiotic division in prophase one for a very long time. Remember, this arrest began before birth. So there is high frequency of meiotic errors, and these are characterized by all those um, non disjunction or chromosomal anomalies that occur, um, and this is associated with the increased maternal age. So this gametogenesis also helps you to understand um, the importance of oral contraception to prevent pregnancy because if you use the barrier type like the, the condoms you're able to prevent the sperm from meeting the egg and that means that um, fertilization will not occur and remember fertilization is what completes um, meiosis 2 of the ovum then we have abnormal gametes for example, you can have sperms that have many heads or many tails, or sperms that are not motile, or sperms that instead of moving forwards, they're moving round in circles, so they will never reach the target. And then for the eggs, a woman can have poor quality eggs or low numbers. So all these are um, clinical applications of this gametogenesis series. So then we start um, fertilization. So what is fertilization? It is a process by which the male and female gametes fuse. That's just it. Fusion of female and male gametes is fertilization. Where does this occur? Usually it's within the ampulla of the fallopian tube. So this is the ampulla. Fallopian tube has the infundibulum with the fimbria at the end, followed by ampulla, then the narrowest portion, which is the isthmus, and the interstitial or intramural part towards the uterus. So fertilization occurs at the ampulla. So what are these phases of fertilization? So number one, you start with acrosomal reaction. So we have enzymes from the acrosome which have to help the sperm to pass through the ova. Then the sperm passes through the corona radiata. Remember the follicular cells around the ova. Then after corona radiata, the sperm penetrates zona pellucidum and zona reaction occurs. So zona reaction is just a reaction to only enable one sperm to pass into the oocyte. So it causes a transformational change to prevent other sperms from entering, so that you only have one sperm fertilizing one ova. After zona reaction, the plasma membrane of the oocyte and the sperms will fuse, and then immediately you will now complete the sequential division. Remember, it had started and it was arrested at metaphase 2, but now after fertilization, you're able to complete it after the male and uh, uh, female uh, nuclei fuse. So the female pronucleus will form, the male pronucleus will form. So these are the phases of fertilization. And lastly, after male and female pronucleus fuse, you form a zygote. So you need to know the first step is acrosomal reaction. So the enzymes produced to help to pass through coronary diata, then zona pellucida, zona reaction to prevent other sperms just allow one sperm to enter. Plasma membrane of oocyte and sperm will fuse. Then you complete second meiotic division, you form the female pronucleus, and then the male pronucleus also forms, and each of these is haploid. So when they join, you get your diploid restoration, and then you form the zygote. So those are this. So as you can see, um, when it gets to the zona, zona reaction occurs, then you complete second meiotic, then you can see female and male pronuclear have formed, then they will join. So zona reaction, you have the cortical um, granules that will produce factors that will alter zona pellucida and uh, make it a barrier for more sperms or further sperm penetration. So this is basically what happens. So you start with an uh, acrosomal enzymes, to digest the egg jelly, okay, then the proteins on the sperm bind onto the receptors, then the plasma membranes are going to fuse, you form the male and female pronucleus, and they join and you form the zygote. So what are the results of fertilization? We've gone through stages of fertilization, now you need to know what are the results of fertilization. You complete second meiotic division. Remember it had started and was arrested at metaphase 2. 
then you are able to restore diploid number. Female pronuclear has haploid, male pronuclear has haploid. So when they join, you restore your diploid. You're able to have species variation. You're mixing genes from the, uh, the, the egg, the oocyte, and the sperm. Then you are able to determine the chromosomal sex after fertilization. You're able to know whether the fetus will be male or female. Then you are able to initiate cleavage. Cleavage is just mitotic division of um, the zygote. Uh, then a zygote will form after this fusion. So basically that's it. So what is the critical application of this knowledge on fertilization? The aspect of infertility. Okay, there are so many factors that may cause infertility when the sperm, preventing sperm and ovum from fusing. So it could be abnormal sperm or abnormal um, the transport of the egg from the ovum to the site or factors that prevent the two of them to fuse. It could be immunological factors. So the immune system in the female reproductive tract is not conducive for the male. The male sperm could no longer swim because it's not motile. So there are many factors. And in cases of infert infertility, is not being able to conceive after two years of regular sexual intercourse. So, and that is usually now taken care of by assisted reproductive technologies where you can use in vitro fertilization and all that. Then we have methods of contraception. There are barrier methods like condoms, surgical contraception like vasectomy for male and tubal ligation for female, all this to prevent uh, fertilization and pregnancy. Then you have also the uh, aspect of multiple pregnancies that may result after fertilization. So next we discuss early development. So basically, after and female pronuclear have uh, fused, so what happens? Cleavage begins. Cleavage is just repeated mitotic divisions of the zygote, repeated mitotic divisions. It begins 30 hours after fertilization. So as the zygote is passing along the uterine tube, it undergoes mitosis. So you form blastomeres. So mitosis is occurring and you're forming blastomeres. So these are blastomeres and you start with 2, then 4, 8, 16, 32, and so on and so forth. And in this is what we are calling compaction. So all these blast uh, cells become compacted. And you end up with a molecular. So this is what we call a molecular. Then it develops um, spaces in between which will be filled up with fluid. So this generally is called a blastocyl. So blastocyl is just... Um, Mm, a, a morula that is developing this uh, species and when it now f is filled up with fluid it's now called a blastocyst so this is your fertilized egg the cells mitosis has occurred through cleavage then you develop species fill up with fluid then it pushes the cells in one side so that forms an inner cell mass and the whole thing is now called a blastocyst because it contains fluid so the inner cell mass is what will form your embryo, okay? And then the remaining cells form the trophoblast. And this cavity is your blastocyst cavity. So the whole thing is your, okay? So this is your blastocyl, blastocyst cavity. This is your inner cell mass that will form embryoblast. This is your trophoblast. And remember, this is the inner lining of the uterus, the endometrium. So we need this developing embryo to enter and implant into the endometrium of the uterus. So again, this is your inner cell mass, this is your fluid, outer cells will form the trophoblast that will eventually form the placenta, inner cell mass will form the embryo. So you have 2, 4, 16, so this is basically what happens during cleavage. You will end up with a morula, and you develop um, spaces that will be filled with fluid, and eventually you have your blastocyst. So cleavage is just early mitotic division of fertilized egg, Blastomia are daughter cells from cleavage. Morula is when you're at 12 to 16 cell stage and you're enclosed in zona pellucida. And blastocyst when you have about 100 blastomeres with a blastocyl, which is a, a fluid compartment, inner cell mass, and the trophoblast. So this is what happens. You've reached the ampulla, fertilization has occurred. Then you start your cleavage. And now we are going to prepare for implantation. So here we are. We are at our. We have our blasto uh, blastocyst here. So you have your inner cell mass. Cells will now form 
are hypoblasts, which are cuboidal, and the remaining ones form epiblasts, which are columnar. Then you develop two, so you have two layers of cells, hypoblasts, cuboidal, and columnar um, epiblasts, and you have two cavities, primary yolk sac and amniotic cavity. Okay, then, so the epiblasts are columnar, the hypoblasts are cuboidal, and therefore you form your bilaminar disc, and this occurs at the second week after fertilization. So in week two, you have two layers, epiblast, columnar, and cuboidal, hypoblast. This occurs at week two. Then uh, on the eighth day, the epiblast cells form amnioblast. This amnioblast form the amniotic membrane. The amnioblast will secrete amniotic fluid that will fill the amniotic cavity. So epiblast is what forms the amniotic membrane. With the amnioblast that line it, they secrete amniotic fluid into the amniotic cavity. While on the ninth day, your primary yolk sac will form. How does it form? From the hypoblast. So hypoblastic cells will form extraembryonic endoderm, and from this you have your primary yolk sac forming. So this is your hypoblast, cuboidal cells will form your yolk sac, okay, houses membrane and primary yolk sac, and epiblast will form amnioblast that will line the amniotic cavity. These are amnioblast lining amniotic cavity filled with amniotic fluid. The trophoblast eventually form two layers cytotrophoblast and syncytiotrophoblast that invades the endometrium. This is the endometrium. This um, embryo was in the cavity of the uterus, but it has been able to penetrate and enter into the endometrium. So in the third week, what happens? So you have, um, um, second week is characterized as a week of twos. Week two, with two layers, hypoblast and epiblast, then two cavities, yolk sac from hypoblast, cuboidal hypoblast, and amniotic cavity from the columnar epiblastic cells. Then the extraembryonic um, uh, mesoderm that has been formed will develop cavities that will divide into two, an outer somatopleuric extraembryonic mesoderm and an inner splanchnopleuric extraembryonic mesoderm. Then the trophoblast will be divided again into two cytotrophoblasts and syncytiotrophoblasts. So those are whatever forms at the week of twos. Then the extraembryonic mesoderm, as we've said, is usually cells that are derived from epiblast and hypoblast. So both epiblast and hypoblast form extraembryonic mesoderm. And then they develop spaces, which is extraembryonic coelom, that will divide it into an inner um, somatopleuric and outer inner splanchnopleuric and outer somatopleuric extraembryonic mesoderm. So how do you form the colonic cavity? So large cavities usually develop within the extraembryonic mesoderm, and those cavities will coalesce and form extraembryonic coelomic cavity, and really that's the colonic cavity. So this is the colonic cavity here. So the coelom, coelomic cavity that separates the extraembryonic mesoderm into inner splanchnopleuric and outer um, somatopleuric. So the chorionic cavity will now surround the amniotic cavity and the yolk sac except where you have your uh, connecting stock. So all this is your chorionic cavity surrounding yolk sac and the amniotic cavity except at the connecting stock. So in the week of two, it's week two, it is two millimeters, two cell masses, hypoblast, epiblast, you have two poles, embryonic and ab embryonic poles, and the trophoblasts are cyto and syncytial trophoblasts, and you have two cavities, a multi cavity, and the yoxa cavities, and the layers of the embryo are also two, epiblast and hypoblast. So in the next um, um, video, we discuss implantation. Thank you.